This is a summary testimony of Elder Deaconess Yuninam, and this is the testimony of uh, her daughter, daughter Yongja Kim, uh, of Elder Deaconess Yuninam. Elder Deaconess Yuninam was the eldest daughter of a Buddhist family and grew up in this environment. In the year she was, uh, she turned 13. It was by coincidence that she left the house that day with the servant to meet a woman missionary to then receive Christ that day. Her family was a well-known rich family in town, yet it was a male-dominated society. So although they had enough to send the sons to Tokyo to study abroad, they treated their daughter by locking her up at home. That is why she spent most of her days stuck at home, yet the passion inside this young girl's heart and love for Jesus continued to grow. When the elder of the family found out about this change, she rebuked, they rebuked her and also tried to persuade her. However, when she did not compromise and stayed firm in her beliefs, she started to receive incredible persecution. Sometimes she was physically beaten, but when this happened, her heart grew stronger. As time passed, she felt like she would be as good as living dead in a house that brought the best shamans from all the provinces of Korea to perform exorcisms over 12 times in one year and had terrifying idols made of straw on every building in the home. Thus, under such persecution, she made the decision to run away. So she started to coerce her mother, who loved her the most in the family. She consistently persuaded her by saying, If I stay here, I'm going to die. If you let me leave, I will study so diligently and return home in glory. Her mother had already uh, pitied her at this point, seeing how much she was suffering, and so in the end, she listened to her plea. Nam's mother helped her to disguise as a boy and put in a great sum of money into her bag and sent her off in the early mornings of that day. So Elder Nam left her home trusting in Jesus alone, but in reality, she had nowhere to go. However, God did not forsake the small girl who believed and relied on him and gave the impression to her to go to Tegu. Yet because Nam hardly left home before even, even for errands, she had no idea where to start to head to Tegu. But God impressed in her heart again that she would just have to walk and her footsteps would lead her there. In this way, she walked for over a month and finally reached Tegu. Once there, she stopped an officer and asked him, I heard that there are many missionaries here in Tegu. Can you show me where one lives? And he led her to a house on the request. There, an American missionary welcomed her warmly with a smile on his face. The missionaries there had been about to start their early morning prayers when they met this beautiful child who told them that she wanted to study here so that she could believe in Jesus better. They took it as a sign that God sent her to them, and with joy they treated her as if she was an angel from heaven. But shockingly, instead of educating her, they started making her do the laundry, clean, cook western food, and do all kinds of household chores. For Nam, she had never worked a day in her life, and this labor was so intense and difficult, she wept bitterly by herself in sorrow. Yet she still loved Jesus, and so she recovered with the desire to participate in Bible study. Even while doing all the dirty and difficult chores, she did not lose her smile and continued her service praising with a joyful heart. Six months passed like this, and without one word of complaint, Nam continued to work diligently. One day, the missionaries called for her and said the following, Till now, we have been testing you to see if you are a true daughter of God, if you can truly become a precious worker of God, and if you are capable of absolute obedience, and if you are able to endure. However, we cannot help but be so impressed and admire you. All this time, you have done so well in your services and sacrifices. So starting from today, do not do any more laborious work, and instead, we want you to learn the Bible with us and be educated. And they brought back their housekeeper who had been sent away on vacation to test Elder Nam. And from that day on, they treated her like a princess. Elder Nam started attending the Daegu Shinmyung Girls Middle School that the Missionary Foundation was running and started as a sixth grader. With the wisdom God gave her, Elder Nam studied very well and was a role model student who also believed in Jesus diligently too. When she graduated after five years, Elder Nam had transformed by then to become a fashionable modern woman. She was able to earn a scholarship for Hawaii Theological Seminary and continued her studies. During this time, as a modern woman, it was very rare to be able to study abroad. And so with this proud achievement upon her, she wanted to receive the approval of her parents and make them happy and decided to visit home. Meanwhile, in Mazan, her family had believed that her eldest daughter to be missing and put out a handsome reward for those who knew of her whereabouts, but with no progress, they had assumed she was dead and had given up. 
This is when Algernon went back home as this fashionable modern woman, and when she approached her old home, even her old servant could not recognize her. And when Algernon revealed who she was, the servant ran to inform the family. But when her father and brother heard this news, as they played Changi in the yard, they ran to her with clubs in hand. They said, a yellow evil ghost came into our Nam household and shamed us and ran away, and now has come back as another yellow ghost. She will completely ruin us. And they made such a ruckus while beating Nam relentlessly. After being beaten so heavily, Elder Nam fainted, and because her family feared rumors spreading in the town, they locked her up in the attic. But her mother, who loved her so, came to tend to her daughter and fed and diligently healed her, even giving her special herbal medicine to recover. And when she recovered, Elder Nam told her what had happened to her, and her mother determined that there was no way to block the path of her daughter who was so devoted to the Lord that she once again helped her daughter to escape after signing all her documents to help her study abroad. That is how Elder Nam was on track to leave for Hawaii on an army plane. But when she was holding her farewell service on the harbor in Busan, her brother chased after her and kept her from studying abroad. Once again, she was beaten and dragged home, and they gave her an ultimatum. Either she would be killed, or she would need to give everything up and get married. But because Elder Nam loved Jesus and wanted to devote herself to the Lord, she believed to die would be better than to be married into a Buddhist family, and so she started her third escape from home. Now she was in a dilemma where she could no longer even stay at the missionary home in Tegu, so instead she went across the sea to Shanghai. There in that foreign land, she only had the Lord to rely on, and once again, Elder Nam followed the guide of the Lord to the YMCA. Back then, it really was the Young Men's Christian Association. And she stayed there amongst young adults who were participating in the independence movement and continued her faith life. She also received a lot of support and help from the young adult president at that time, and as our heart opened up to him, they believed that they could fight together for the Lord, and the two ended up marrying. At this time, Elder Nam was 27 years old, and back then, women married at 13 and had children at 15, so as a 27-year-old, she would have been treated like a grandmother. And her marriage life started back in Tegu. She had joined a well-known Christian household. However, her mother-in-law was greatly disappointed in the fact that her eldest son, who she had even sent abroad to study, came back with a wife who was a grandma, and she worried that she would not be able to have kids. Kids. Also, because of Nam's image as a modern woman, she received a lot of persecution. Her one ray of hope was her father-in-law, who was a man of God, and gave her much comfort. But the worry that she would not be able to have kids was a mistake, and Elder Nam had babies one after another. However, even as she birthed her fourth, she only had daughters. In this family, as the eldest son's wife, she really needed to have a son. And so she had her fifth child, yet the fifth was also a girl. And the sixth daughter came and went, and at her seventh child, she believed that it would be a son no matter what. But devastatingly, it was once again a daughter. And the eighth daughter that she later had is the very deaconess Yang Jia Kim who compiled this testimony about herself and her mother. Deaconess Yang Jia Kim, from when she was young, received a lot of hate and was told often that she should not have been born. This regret turned into bitter scars for Kim, but through her mother and through receiving Christ, these scars disappeared and she rather gave thanks for being the eighth daughter and became proud of it. And when her parents were holding her after her birth, they heard the following from God. He said, why do you not cry out to your living God in supplication when you have this desperate wish in your hearts? Till now, because you have just given thanks after having daughters, and because you said to me you would raise them well, it could not be helped that your wish was not fulfilled. And from that moment, the couple prayed diligently, and together for the birth of a son. This was when Elder Nam was already 47, and she had menopause, so it was now impossible to get pregnant. But they asked for a miracle and believed in the power of God that let Abraham at the age of 100 and Sarah at the age of 90 have Isaac. And miraculously, she did become pregnant. And not only was she blessed with the ninth child, her son, she also had another son, her final and tenth child. Deaconess Yang Jia Kim remembers her mother waking up every dawn to pray and that she would pray for those who were alienated in suffering, naming each person one by one and interceding for them. 
She prayed for each of her ten children, and at the end of each prayer, she lifted up her tenth child as a tithe to the Lord and asked the Lord to use him as his servant. Unfortunately, although Elder Nam's faith was remarkable, her children's faith were not. They grew up in an affluent household, wishing for nothing and receiving the best education, and this made all of them very prideful. And although they attended church with parents who were elders and elder deaconesses and even held position as Sunday school teachers and part of the worship team, they did not have true faith. And it was particularly the youngest child, the one Elder Nam constantly lifted up to God to be his servant, that strayed from the right path in ninth grade as he grew up as the king of the household and was spoiled the most. What he thought as the greatest glory in his young immature years to be the servant of God, since his mother constantly prayed it over him every day, as he grew older, he realized that meant he needed to become a good-for-nothing pastor, and he started to rebel. And even though her children broke her heart like so, Elder Nam did not get disappointed and continued to pray diligently. And because of her abundant love, she not only prayed for others, but actually sacrificed and gave her service without boasting of it. When the sun set, she would go out to the markets and would feel compassion for the merchants who could not sell their products and would buy them for a higher price and would evangelize to them, saying, I'm a grandma who believes in Jesus. I pray you too will believe in Jesus. God bless you. And because evangelism that is on the basis of love that has action, it always touches the other. Many souls were saved through her. And with her financial abundance, she would take the lettuce, potatoes, and fish she had bought at the market, as well as the excess clothes left over in her home, and she would go to the next town, Hongje, which is where the slums and ghettos were. And she would announce herself as the grandma who believes in Jesus, and she gave away the clothes and food to all who came. There were many patients inside the slums. There were those who had tuberculosis and vomited everything. There were those who were just waiting for their death because of cancer. But the majority were patients who could not work due to malnutrition. Elder Nam would go into the rotting, smelling rooms of the patients and pray for them and take care of them. And on days she evangelized like this, she would come back with so much tears in her eyes that her eyes were swollen over. And she carried home bags of infected clothes covered in pus and blood to wash for them to bring on her next trip. But her children rather persecuted their mother for all that she did and nailed the coffin on her by saying the following, Why do we need to believe in Jesus wretchedly like this? How ignorant you have to be to evangelize to people like this. Why can't you be like dad and believe in Jesus in a reverent, holy, refined, gentlemanly, and intellectual manner? Meanwhile, their father, who was an elder, had a different attitude towards one's faith life. His study was filled with different Christian scholarly texts, and he was so knowledgeable about the Bible that pastors would ask him questions and come to borrow his books. Moreover, because he was well off, he gave a lot of tithing to the church and thanks offerings and was the front runner for mission funds. However, he delighted in these acts of showing himself off and boasting. Because their kids liked the attitude of of faith of their father, they harassed their mother to be more like their father and yelled at her to stop embarrassing them and to stop going to the slums. Even though she was harassed by her kids and husband in this manner, Elder Nam never fought back or got angry at them. She always smiled and replied that only God knows what's right and would say, when your faith grows deeper roots, you will understand. Yet even while saying these things, she cried tears for them on her own and won against feeling miserable through prayer. Yet this elder Nam, who had always been healthy and did not have any illnesses, one day had indigestion and told her youngest daughter she felt like throwing up and asked her to buy some medicine. But when the medicine did not work, she felt like something was truly wrong and asked to go to the hospital. When Elder Nam, who had never been ill before, asked herself to go to the hospital, her children realized the severity of the situation and brought her to the hospital. The doctor diagnosed her with malignant stage 3 stomach cancer. She could not even receive surgery and was told she only had 20 days to live. When they realized their mother, who had been so healthy and just a few days ago had traveled all over the slums and was the evangelizing queen, that she had stomach cancer, they could not believe it. They firmly believed it to be a wrong diagnosis and went to the most well-known doctor to be diagnosed again. Yet the results were the same. Her children 
moved her to the Pulguadong house and held services and mourned for her. Yet a strange thing happened during this process. Usually, those who are on their deathbed due to cancer, their skin color would slowly darken to a charred color. Yet Elder Nam's face was the exact opposite and shone like the face of an angel and transformed to a glorious face. She told her ten children that if you are lazy with praising and praying and reading the Bible, then wretched and wicked devils in beastly shapes will climb over the fence and enter the room. But if you worship, the evil spirits would be afraid and leave. And so she asked them to continue to praise and pray and read the Bible by her bedside and not stop. However, because it was impossible for her children who had their own families to take care of, that uh, for them to be there all the time, 24-7, they decided to make a schedule and one by one stayed by her side. During this time, each day, the cancer patient's face uh, grew brighter and brighter, and everyone who visited her from their church were also surprised and rather received comfort from her and left again. It was September 23, 1968. Elder Nam had a particular feeling, so she called her entire family over and asked to have a farewell service, and the room was covered in tears. After the service, her first and youngest daughter remained behind, and she told them that it was her time to go to the Lord and asked them to wash her and help her prepare. And she asked them to dress her in a beautiful jade hanbok that she had prepared long ago for this very day. When the preparation was over, she once again called her family to her and gave three dying wishes to all of them and pleaded with them to keep it. First, she asked them to above all be filled with love and to resemble the sacrificial love of God and act out this love to others. That although she tried her hardest to show this love, that she is leaving without fulfilling all of this love and she asked her children to do the rest. Second, she strongly urged them to keep a diligent tithing life. She told them how God owns everything, but he allows us to use nine-tenth uh, of this, so we must give back one-tenth of all he gives us to be used for God's works. And if we steal even that from him, we would never be able to receive the blessings. Third, she told them to become a believer that is like grain and to lift up the servant of the Lord who serves the altar and to serve and volunteer for one's faith life. After speaking her wishes, she made her ten children repeat it three times, and after that she was reassured and told them, These are not my words, but the commandment of the Lord. Until the day you die, you must keep it well, so that all of you can go to heaven. And I cannot wait to see you all there. And she delighted in them. And she then lifted up her frail arms and faced the heavens in her spirit and said, O oh God of love, I thank you for your great grace. You are now calling me to you, so I will go to your side. And her spirit slowly left her. Immediately, the room was covered in wailing and cries. Mother, mother, our poor mother, I was never able to give you luxuries, and you left having only suffered. We are undutiful children. Please forgive us. And they continued to cry. As time passed and they grew weary, they left to go prepare for the funeral. But Deaconess Yang Jia Kim stayed and continued to beat her chest and rolled around crying, Oh, Father God, I believe you are alive and working. Please have pity on my mother. If you save her, I will lift up my life and serve. She cried out like this while embracing her mother, rubbing her cheeks on her, crying, and was almost near hysteria. She had uh, thought that she was alone, but she then realized that the youngest was also next to her, crying desperately and without abandon. He thought of how his mother prayed to him, for him to be a servant of the Lord, but after puberty, how he rejected this prayer and strayed from the path and hurt his mother's heart. He also embraced his mother and cried out. Then, when he grew weary, he too left. Now Deaconess Yang Jia Kim really was alone, and she cried that much harder. Five hours passed like this, and when she felt if she cried any longer, she would go mad. She suppressed her sadness, fixed up her mother's body, cleaned her, and covered her with a sheet. And on the way out of the room, she looked back once more. In that very moment, she stood shocked 
out of her mind. She doubted what she was seeing with her eyes because guess what happened? Underneath the sheet, her mother started to move. Deaconess Kim thought she was hallucinating, but then as she paid more attention and looked at her again, she was sure that there was movement. So she screamed loudly, Mother is alive! When her family heard, they thought she had gone crazy from crying for so many hours and holding their mother's body. But Deaconess Kim thought they did not hear her, and so with a louder voice, she yelled for them. And when she did so, the youngest came running, and by then, Elder Nam had already gotten rid of the sheet over her and was rolling her eyes this way and that. The youngest then also yelled out, Mother is alive! And that is when everyone got out of their shock and came tumbling into the room. And they all stood there frozen in place. It was Deaconess Kim who ran the fastest to her mother and hugged her while crying tears of joy. But her mother's focus was not clear, and she looked around the room and could not recognize anyone. She asked, Where am I? Why am I in this place? I am not someone who would be here in such a gross and awful and rotten smelling place. Because she was speaking nonsense, her daughter shook her, saying, Mother, wake up. What do you mean, where am I? What do you mean it's smelly and rotten and awful here? This is your house and your home. Please, wake up. That is when she looked around the room and her eyes started to focus and she looked at her daughter properly and light started to shine through her eyes. Not only this, but when she opened her mouth to speak, her voice suddenly held so much authority and was so loud and clear when just five hours before you could hardly hear her and that had been as small as the sound of an ant. Elder Nam recognized her family and called their names and said, My children, Listen carefully. There is not much time. Hurry and call everyone together, our relatives and bloodline. Tell them I have something urgent to say. Everyone was captivated by her bright eyes and her confident and strong voice that they ran at the door saying, Yes, we will do this right away. So her family all took different roles upon themselves. The first group went to the public telephone at the lo local bus stop, and another group went to wake up their sleeping next-door neighbor to use their phone, and the rest opened their telephone book and started calling all their relatives who lived throughout Korea. You see, Elder Nam woke up around 11.30 p.m. at night, so there was only 30 minutes left for curfew. So it was truly an impossible task to call and gather everyone, all her relatives who lived all throughout Seoul. But a miracle happened. Even though the time was so late and there was no reasonable explanation to find out how they rode or what they rode to get to Pulguadong, everyone arrived before the curfew started. Elder Nam asked to be moved to the middle of the living room and everyone stood around and filled the adjacent rooms so they could be around her. Her, ten, chil her ten children stood closest to her. But... Around her stood 40 people, and they all fit in the house. And that is when she opened her mouth and started to speak. My beloved 10 children, and my husband, Elder Kim, and my relatives, what I am about to say starting now are not my words, but they are the words of the Lord himself. So please listen carefully and do exactly as he says. She spoke as if she was a powerful prophet, and her voice held so much authority and was strong and confident and her eyes shone so brightly that everyone was completely captivated. Starting from now, I will be relaying to you this testimony of heaven that Elder Nam spoke of. When Elder Nam left this world, she saw the heavens open and a beautiful cloud of flowers came down in front of her home. The chief angel and six angels came to guide Elder Nam's soul, and she rode the cloud of flowers and left. Elder Nam was so touched by the angels and cloud of flowers and for God's grace, and at the same time she was so ashamed uh, that it was being given to a sinner like her that she fell down and started crying. Except for the chief angel, the other angels were all young and beautiful. But what was more amazing was that she, the 70-year-old cancer patient who was gray-haired, suddenly was now transformed into a beautiful spiritual being. Philippians 3, 20-21 says the following, 
but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And just like this message, she saw her lowly body transform into a glorious body, and she knew that not one iota of the Bible was false, and it was all true. And with this joy full inside her, she continued to ascend and saw something incredible before her. She was being shown the world of hell. All of a sudden, behind her, she heard, Elder Nam, Elder Nam, and she heard someone call her. Then she heard, Tikin Nam, Tikin Nam. And then she heard someone who was close to her when she was a child calling after her. And she thought, this is really strange. Where are these voices coming from? And when she looked behind her, she saw something truly surprising. For she was standing on that cloud of flowers. And when she looked down, she saw a very big hole that was dark and black. And it was going deep underground. And it was deep and deep and deep, going darker and darker. And she saw the sulfur fire thousands of meters underneath the ground start to boil up. To talk about that path would be like um, the sun being on top of the sea and falling down into the waves. That was how high and low it seemed to be. The sulfur fire was so strong and so scary that she almost fainted. But inside that fire, she heard this voice calling for her. Elder Nam, Elder Nam. Some people said, Deacon Nam. Or some people even said, Yani, Yani, and called her name. And she listened to what the sound was saying. It said this, I can't stand one more second in here. I am dying in here with the sulfur fire. and My body is burning in the worst possible pain. I want to rest, but I cannot. I want to lie down, but cannot lie down. I want to sleep, but cannot sleep. It doesn't stop for even a second. And I have to stand in this fire, constantly burning. I can't stand this. It's too hot. It's too painful. I can't stand it. And then she continued to ride the cloud of fire. With the seven angels, she continued to travel to heaven. And they were so envious of her and said, Elder Nam, Elder Nam, please save us. Save us from this fiery fire. Save us. And they continued to cry out to her. That is when Elder Nam woke up and looked to see who it was. And she was so shocked. Oh, Elder A, oh, Elder B, why are you in hell? Elder Nam was so shocked because these were peoples, these were elders who had walked this faith life with her. And she had passed away recently. So she thought this person would be in heaven before me, waiting for me. But she was waving to her from the fires of hell, saying, Elder Nam, Elder Nam, I cannot withstand this pain. And there is no way to get out of this fire. This fire will not end, but it is forever, forever. And I have to live in this fire forever. I cannot stand this, Elder Nam. Please, please, if you go to heaven, will you tell them that this elder is lost in hell? Will you tell them that? And they cried out to her. And when she got her bearings back, she looked down again and she saw blackened, charred figures inside the lake of fire jumping up and down. And she was surprised once again. For just one meter apart from one another, these objects that looked like pieces of wood that were burnt and just floating in the lake of fire were in reality people. Their eyes and nose and mouth and feet had all melted in the fire and disappeared. They became charred figures inside the fire, but their souls cried out to Elder Nam. Yes. So Elder Nam recognized some of them and said, Oh, Elder A, oh, Elder B, why are you in hell? Pastor, why are you in hell? Yes, there were pastors in hell. There were elders. There were believers 
There were these people who used to be believers that were burning in hell. And so Elder Nam was so shocked. She saw all of these things. And she saw that God's eyes and our eyes were different. God sees us with fiery eyes and sees our center. And even if they look like they're seeking Jesus on the outside and go back and forth from church and give offerings well and abundantly give to others, that if their hearts are hardened and they are disobedient and have a messed up faith life, that they will be judged accordingly. But because Elder Nam was filled with love, And because she was seeing hell so closely in front of her, she tried to reach out her hand to them. She felt pity for them. She held out her hand to them, trying to lift them up to the tower, to the cloud of flowers. And she called Elder A, Elder A, take my hand. But that's when the chief angel shook her uh, arm and told her, Elder Nam, you are different from these people, so do not look at them or speak with them. And after that, hell got farther and farther away from her. And she bowed down and she cried tears. Lord, I am sinner of sinners and I have less faith than them. But why have you not sent me to hell? And why are you taking me to heaven? I am rightfully so to fall into hell. But you have given me a cloud of flowers and seven angels and are sending me to heaven. And she was so thankful for this, and she continued to cry. But while she was doing this, the chief angel uh, touched her and said, Elder Nam, you are going to heaven to meet the Lord. She wants, he wants you to receive, to uh, give all glory to God and praise him. So let us praise God together. So she stopped crying and with the angels together, hand in hand, she started to praise God and was overflowing with joy. And she even danced. After much time passed, the cloud of flowers reached a grandiose and large pillar with a door. She thought then that behind these doors would be heaven and walked in. But instead, she felt the worst sort of fear surround her. And while she was thinking that it was strange she would feel this way, when if this was heaven, she would be feeling joy and peace and be completely captivated by those feelings, she realized that God, with the sure purpose, was showing her the judgment seat. There were two lines towards the throne of judgment, and souls were lined up all the way down, and they were all trembling in fear, shaking like a leaf. Moreover, their eyes were filled with anxious and worried thoughts, and they could not stand still. When their names were called, they faced the judgment seat, and their lives flashed before them like a movie screen, and then their final judgment was made. It seemed like burning in the sulfuric fires of hell would be better than going through this action, waiting for their turn, trembling in fear. That was how miserable their estates were. In this place, she saw souls she knew, and they begged with her to put in a good word to Jesus for them. But because their fates were already sealed, there was no allowance for compassion. Elder Nam was so shocked by this situation that she forgot the joy of going to heaven and kept crying. But while she was crying tears, she saw a light so bright that she could not open her eyes. When she asked the chief angel what this light was that, she, that was surrounding her, the angel said that she had now reached heaven. As she stepped into heaven, the first thing that hit her was the beautiful fragrance that was entirely captivating. And as she stood smelling this beautiful smell, wondering where it came from, all her past sadnesses and shock disappeared. And she felt herself overflowing with joy and peace from inside her. And she then saw the endless fields and fields of flowers around her. There were many flowers here that were not on earth. And because Elder Nam had always loved flowers, she had planted many of them in her yard and had even asked to have flowers planted around her grave. These flowers in heaven all praised God in song as well. And as they did so, she heard the praise of the choir and turned around to see hundreds of cherub angels come before her, welcoming her. 
Their beautiful singing completely captivated Elder Nam. She said that this beautiful singing was heard throughout heaven wherever she was. And as they walked, the chief angel went before her, behind them the cherub choir, and then Elder Nam. And behind them were the six other angels, and they all continued to walk further into heaven. Surprisingly, they weren't all walking on the ground, but were rather one meter off the ground walking on air. Even when Elder Nam tried to ground her feet, she continued to stay in the air, could not believe her eyes. After walking into heaven for a while, everyone left except for the chief angel. He pointed far up ahead and said the bridegroom Jesus was awaiting his bride, Elder Nam. This was what Elder Nam had been waiting for her whole life. This was why she withstood all her persecution and ridicule. Why she fought the good fight for this one person. The fact that she was about to meet this Jesus overwhelmed her and she froze in that spot. She saw Jesus shining in light, standing in a shimmering white gown with both arms wide open. Elder Nam could not dare lift her face to see Jesus' face and could not confidently walk towards him. So instead, she covered her face with her hands and crawled towards him. She cried tears of awe as she spent her time slowly crawling to him and then kneeled at the feet of Jesus. Then she heard the voice of Jesus say, My beloved daughter, Yanina. But she still could not dare lift her face and laid prostrate in front of him. Once again, she heard Jesus say, My beloved daughter, Yaninam. But still, she didn't have the courage to look. That's when she heard in her heart, You fool! Did you not live your entire life for this one moment? Next time he calls you, be brave and stand up and go into his arms. Then she heard Jesus' voice for the third time. Immediately, Elder Nam said, Lord, here I am. And she stood right up as she looked into the eyes of Jesus. But the moment her eyes caught his, she yelled out, Oh Lord, I am a sinner. And she embraced herself with both arms and fainted. For the face of Jesus she expected was patient and merciful and full of love. But in reality, it had been stern. And his eyes were filled with fire that saw through her. And like a clear crystal, all her disgusting sin was exposed. And that was why she tried to hide herself with two arms around her and then fainted. With a trembling and fearful heart, she cried out, O oh Lord, it was wrong of me to think that a sinner like myself could enter heaven. Forgive this sinner. And she beat her chest and repented. While she was deep in her tears of repentance, she heard the voice of the Lord repeat three times, My beloved daughter, Yoni Nam. Elder Nam replied, saying, Lord, here I am, a sinner. And she barely was able to stand up and look to the Lord. However, this time, the face of Jesus was love and patient and overflowing in mercy and stood there with a soft smile on his face. And he opened his two arms wide open and embraced her. The warmth of his embrace was so soft, so comforting, so beautiful, that she dug deeper into that embrace as strongly as she could. Jesus patted her on the back and said, My beloved daughter, Yanina, you've suffered so much till now. And Elder Nam was so touched, she wailed in front of him. For a while, she stayed in Jesus' embrace. And while here, another visitor came to see her. This was Elder Nam's father-in-law, Elder Kim. Elder Kim embraced her with wide arms. He was such a diligent Christian in his years that his nickname used to be Grandpa Jesus. He, was raised, uh, he raised up a church in Daegu and lived amongst the poor all his life. Elder Kim gave everything he could eat or wear to serve the poor and lived his entire life with little and was one who lived out Jesus' love with his entire body. And Elder Kim was one who, rec who was recognized in heaven. 
He embraced her and said, My beloved child, my beloved daughter-in-law, come into my arms. And Elder Nam was so excited to see her father-in-law, she leapt into his embrace and rubbed her cheeks against him. She had really missed him so much to the point that she had cried daily for several months when he died. And so this reunion in heaven had been so heartfelt and touching. Elder Kim told her, I knew you would come and I was preparing the way and they talked about all that had happened in between. But while she was talking with him, the chief angel came and told her, uh, told her, Elder Nam, now is not the time to be doing so. Jesus is calling for you again. Elder Nam then came to her sentence and went back in front of Jesus. And when she did so, Jesus spoke solemnly to her. Elder Nam, listen carefully. You believe that you are in heaven right now and are rejoicing, but your call is not yet over. Do you think you have the right to enter heaven when you have not done your all as an elder yet? As a servant of love, yes, you have achieved much and even won the evangelizing award three times and are called the queen of evangelizing. However, you are not able to do the most bare minimum call, which is to save your flesh and blood. And thus your other accolades have no worth in heaven. Amongst your ten children, you were not able to make even one true Christian. Because how can you say that you have fulfilled your call and can come into heaven? This is not possible. So hurry, go back to the world and go to your children, relatives, and fulfill your call to save them. That is how you will earn the right to enter heaven, and I will call you again. When she heard all this, she surrendered to the Lord and cried out, your words are true, Lord. I was not able to save my own children, and to think I could enter heaven was wrong. I left my children to the world and did not keep your commandments, and I broke your heart, so Lord, forgive me. Now that I know my call, allow me to go back to fulfill it. And in that moment, Elder Nam was lifted up onto the cloud of flowers by the angels and swiftly traveled down to the world and stood in front of her house. This is when Elder Nam's body started to move. And because she had spent time in heaven where it was filled with beautiful fragrances, the world on earth thus seemed so dirty and wretched in comparison. The world smelled rotten and life the worst cesspool of sin. It was only after going to heaven that she realized we are no better than insects living in this place. That is why when she opened her eyes, she asked, why am I here and spoke nonsense and why her children could not understand her. While Elder Nam, who had died, came back to life and was telling her testimony and the amazing miracle started to happen in her home. The 40 so people who had gathered started to change and started to believe that God is alive and working amongst us. And even though they used to doubt the existence of heaven and hell, like in Hebrews 9.27 where it says, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, they were able to believe these words. Just like how there was an amazing work of the Spirit in the upper room of Mark in the town of Purguang, the Spirit started working wonders. It was like a modern reimagining of Mark's upper room. And all of the Kim household who were gathered there, those who had the best education, some being educated in America and others with doctorate degrees, all were wealthy and some were even conglomerates of high officials in the government. And, and so they were very prideful. Uh, even though they all grew up in a Christian household, they were worldly and were corrupted like Judas Iscariot who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But Elder Nam, whenever she had time, visited her 10 children and relatives and individually visited them, persuading them to repent and return to God. And sometimes she would visit their offices and cry tears. But in the past, they had called her embarrassing and hated how she followed them around and asked her to stop torturing them and rather scorned her and ridiculed her before sending her away. But even till all her hair grayed, Elder Nam did not give up. And it was this grandmother who died and came back to life and testified of heaven. And she called each person by name and condemned them, saying, Repent! And that is why the spirit of repentance fell upon the place and the house became a house of wailing. 
Not only her ten children, but all her relatives lifted their hands, trembling. Some could not stand still and were rolling on the ground in agony and repented. Others ripped their shirts and ripped at their hearts to the point of seeing blood. And another hit their head so hard on the wall to cause an aneurysm. Another ripped out their hair to the point of losing two fistfuls. That was how desperate they all were. They all cried out, Living God, forgive me of my sins. I had no idea you were alive, that you were watching each one of us with fire in your eyes, and that you would judge us, sep separate us to heaven or hell. Lord, forgive me of the sin of selling you like Judas Iscariot did for money and for nailing you on the cross. And all of them were there in that room, having thrown away their pride and were weeping and wailing. And like young children, they purely opened up to reveal all of themselves. And when they repented, God accepted them, them all as his sons and daughters and poured out the Spirit upon them. This is how each of the 40 people in that house repented and received the Lord. Elder Nam, when she had finished her call in that room, once again returned to heaven. Through the servant of the Lord, Elder Nam, her 10 children and relatives who were fake, lying, quack believers and empty husks of a believer were able to realize their sin and stand in front of the Lord and receive his grace to become true believers. And they became ones who testified of heaven and hell and continued evangelizing in love like Elder Nam and became precious workers of Christ. Moreover, the youngest son that Elder Nam had lifted up to the Lord as a tithe offering, after experiencing his mother's testimony, decided to give himself to the Lord and became a powerful pastor. And deaconess Yang Ja Kim, who lives in New York, preached the kingdom gospel all around America and in foreign conferences around the world. And through her powerful testimony that causes people to weep, she has helped so many souls repent and helped to receive salvation. Her sister, Chong Woo Kim, also lives in America. Until the day that she died, she visited different nursing homes and the elderly who did not have much time to live. And through testimonies and the kingdom gospel that was preached, she saved countless souls. And like her mother, Elder Nam, by showing her love through actions and service, she was well known by the American elderly and they called her the small angel. Not only this, but the rest of of the siblings and relatives all played large roles in the church and they were diligent with even the small tasks given to them and became precious children of the Lord who served his workers. Praise God. Let us at this time remember this testimony and pray all together. <laughs> Let us look at our reality and see how we were not able to fulfill our call and to pray for our relatives. The fact that we were not able to preach the gospel to those closest to us. Lord, we repent of this. Abba Father, you, Lord, you bled for us. And you gave yourself to us for our salvation. This is such a great grace. You have given yourself to us on that cross. Let us remember that sacrifice. But how have we responded to your great grace and love? How did we respond? In what way have we responded? How have we responded to the truth? how we responded to your perfect love God of love may our faith truly have actions that follow that show this love is it does my faith have true love that resembles you Lord we don't want to just profess with our lips we don't want to have faith with just our lips 
We don't want to be those who do not resemble you. Lord, our reality is so sinful in front of you. Lord, our reality is so sinful and is worthy of being judged by you and cursed by you. Lord, we profess this. Lord, we lift up our reality, our real selves to you and lay them down so that through this message, your truth will stand firm. That through this testimony, let us reflect upon ourselves to truly introspectively look at ourselves. Am I truly looking towards God? Am I truly walking this path that you walked? Is everything that I am sacrificing and giving service for, are all my services truly for you? Let us reflect upon ourselves. Lord, you are light. Lord, will you look at our centers and look at our intent? Look in the deepest parts of our heart. Lord, you know every step of our lives. So allow us to see ourselves through your eyes. Lord, in front of your judgment seat, there is nothing that we can cover ourselves with. Our real selves will be exposed exactly as is. Good God, we don't want that time to be a time of fear. We don't want this time to be a time of trembling, but instead to be a time of thanks, a time of joy. Lord, let us return to you to allow this to happen, to be people who repent right now. To turn away from all evil, to think of sin as serious, to do your will, to turn away from that past life. Lord, will you pour out your grace with fear and trembling, with fear and trembling heart. God, we want to work out our salvation. We do not want to go to hell. We do not want to go to hell. Even pastors and elders and deacons, no rank can protect us. Only those who do the will of the Father can go into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, will you awaken us and discipline us to know this fact. Lord, will you pour out your grace? Lord, will you pour out your grace? Abba, Father, Lord, you pierce and pierce our hearts with this testimony. Lord, you desire to speak to us through this word. Lord, we want to today completely repent and return to you. Lord, am I living out this life? Lord, may you let my entire life shine before my eyes so that I can see what my life was like, so that I can truly look into your eyes. Lord, I said I believe. But I would have been wearing a mask in front of you. Have I not been living that life?
Lord, will you shine your light upon us to allow us to repent? Lord, will you shine your light upon us? Abba Father, will you search us and allow us to repent and to seek after you? Lord, will you pour out this grace? Abba Father, Lord, in front of this testimony, we want to search ourselves and confront ourselves. Abba Father, we want to wake up. We want to reflect on all the days we have spent and devoted to you. Lord, you are looking at our center through this testimony. And in front of your fiery eyes, I want to stand in front of you. Lord, will you forgive us? And we want to know, we want to be assured that when we die, there is a heaven and a hell. Abba Father, will you help us stand in front of the truth to be like the grain, to live for this eternal life? We want to be made anew in front of your word. To all be transformed through this word of truth. We have listened and we have lived daily wanting to be transformed. But our true call, our most basic call, is not only for our soul to be saved, but to lead our children and my family to God. That this is such an important call. Let us realize and realize this. That in front of this word today, let us make this determination once again to be true Christians. To not be ashamed when we stand in front of you. With praise and thanks, allow us to meet you, Lord. To be true Christians. And true believers. We ask you for this salvation, God, to be more like you. So that we can all become those. Who you are not ashamed of. God, will you lead us? Holy Spirit, you are here. Will you touch me? Will you be inside of me? Will you protect me? So that I can see what you see. Let me confront myself how you view me. Father, will you come inside of me? Will you give me your eyes to see how you look at me? To see myself with the eyes that look at me? Father, will you forgive me? Father, will you forgive me? Lord, your grace is in this space. But I need your grace. Father, will you come as grace instead of me? Lord, will you forgive me? Will you forgive my life that I have lived? God, Lord, will you forgive me? Lord, will you forgive my selfish heart? Lord, will 
you forgive me for being so self-centered? Lord, forgive me for not having the same heart as you for souls. Lord, I know my limitations. Lord, will you forgive me of my limitations, of my weaknesses? Abba Father, Abba Father, will you pour out your heart upon us? For my soul is so desperate in need for you. Lord, it is the spirit of the people that I love. Lord, their souls are so precious. Just because it's hard, just because I'm persecuted, Lord, I don't want to turn around anymore. But with this heart that you have given me, let us mourn for them. Abba Father, with your heart, I want to live out this life, to not give up on them, to continue to seek after them like you have. Abba Father, will you pour out this heart upon us? To not live fearing the judgment day, but to instead for our loved ones, for our spiritual families on this earth. Lord, how should I live out my life at this time? Lord, will you show us, reveal it to us? to make this decision that after today I will be completely transformed Lord will you give us this grace Lord will you pour it out upon us Lord we seek and seek it after you Lord we ask of your grace at this time Or will you pour it out? Or will you pour out this heart upon us? For your heart that breaks for the nations. Or will you pour out this heart upon us? That once saved is not always saved. That just because I have a faith life, that I will not be assured of my salvation. But to stand in front of you, I want that grace to have this true faith life. To lead the people you have placed in my life, my family, in front of me. The way you pour out. the greatest ways to save them. Lord, we have pity upon our children. Lord, we have pity upon our family members. Lord, we lift up your name. So, Lord, we lift them up to you and we plead and we pray to you. Lord, will you save their souls. And allow us to be that tunnel for them. Lord, without your grace. Lord, if you do not work inside of us, we cannot do this alone. Lord, will you pour out the Spirit like on Pentecost Day, like the day when the Spirit powerfully came upon us. Lord, will you take a hold of your children to let them live with faith to win in this world that is so wicked that they can continue to preach your love to others. Lord, we ask of your protection upon our children, upon our family, that all of my descendants and all of my relatives will sacrifice 
and obey and submit to you. Lord, at this time, we make this decision. Lord, will you come as grace so that the door of salvation will be opened in our families. Lord, we want to make this decision and obey you and lift up our family to you. Lord, will you pour out your grace? Lord, will you come as the spirit of repentance? Lord, will you come as the spirit of repentance? When you give us this great word, let us not lose this opportunity. Lord, will you see us and see my children and see my husband and see my family, Father? Lord, will you remember it all? Lord, will you remember my family, my household? And will you break us? Lord, just as you helped Elder Nam, and that when you spoke, her family broke down in tears. Oh, will you come as the spirit of repentance? Will you come as the spirit of repentance and allow it to be broken and humbled in front of you to grow closer to you, to grow closer to you, God? Lord, will you reveal all our sins and let it be exposed in front of you? Lord, may this testimony shine a light on our lives to be able to withstand the responsibilities that you have given us to not be fooled that we can go to heaven without fulfilling these duties Lord you have given us these people in our lives to save them to help them so Lord we will lead them to Christ no matter what Lord, we don't want to waste this grace that you have given us. Lord, we believe that you have poured out this amazing call to us. So we want to, with faith, obey you and to face your heavens and with your wisdom and with your ways and with your methods that you have given us. We want to lead our family and our children to you. We will not neglect them. We will not let them be led to hell. We will not just watch them go to hell, but instead we will lift our hands up to them to help them. So that not one family will lose sight of this. And that every single family will use this method to receive this blessing. Lord, captivate us with your grace. Believe in me and you and your household will be saved. That is what you say to us, Lord. Lord, let us be awakened that this will be engraved on the hearts of each family member. That through us, we can be used as a tool for heaven. To be tunnels of this gospel of heaven. To be used for our family. Lord, we ask of the Spirit. We want to be filled with the Spirit. God, will you work in this place? 
May every household, every individual have these new methods, new ways to meet you come upon them. And Lord, may you pour out this grace so that every single time they obey, that amazing and wondrous things will occur. That through this testimony, Lord, you are inviting us so that we can pour out our hearts in front of you. You are pouring this out to us. So Lord, through this, may we praise you and lift you up high. That through these ways, you will create salvation amongst many. Lord, we believe in this unseeing power that you have given us. So we focus on you. No matter what anyone says, we will save souls. And we will lead our family to you. And we will not step back from this, God. God, will you work in this place? Will you give courage and determination? And let us be filled with the Spirit to allow all of these things to happen in obedience to you. So that we can do this most basic call to save our family. Abba Father, will you pour out your grace and work in this place? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to lift up our families to you. Lord, we lift up and pray for the souls of the nations in Africa. But first, we, we thank you for letting us lift up our family members, for giving us this chance and grace. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, you have given us this task. And let us not be ashamed when we meet you, Lord. So let us look back at ourselves and our families. And we thank you for inviting us all to you right now. Lord, we don't want to go to hell. Lord, we don't want to go to hell. Lord, we don't want to go to the fiery lakes of hell. So do not let us forget this. But instead, to pray for our children and for our family, we lift them up to you. Lord, will you save them? Lord, will you save them? And obey them? Lord, to obey your works and to continue to walk towards our salvation, to be those who do the desires of you. Lord, once again, we lift our family up to you. Lord, remember us. Lord, remember my wife. Remember my daughter. Remember my husband and my son and my siblings and my parents. Lord, every single person you have given to us, Lord, we take responsibility for them. And this responsibility of salvation that you have given us, may I obey it and continue on. Lord, will you pour out this grace?
Yeah.